Greetings, Earthlings. Hope you're having a good one today. Um, thanks for tuning in to this next video where I'm showing you what goes on on my lawn. Um, setting up here for a little video shoot before I burn daylight. Anyway, what I've got going on today is a uh, nothing too crazy. It's a fertilizer, micronutrient, fungicide application and some micronutrients but there's a bit of a twist today which is kind of what made me think you know what let's let me shoot this and let me talk about this because this is this is going to be a first for me all right so let me explain how this twist came up i'm in this uh private turf group with a bunch of other turf snobs and turf professionals and it's basically a sausage fest where we all get to act immature and laugh at stupid things and and sometimes we talk turf anyway a few days ago some of us were talking about you know where our lawns are at this point in the season and um, I mentioned how you know man it's been so cool that my lawn still hasn't finished filling in from the scalp that I did back in late February and again this is because it's a warm season grass waiting for warm temperatures so back to the group some of us are in there and we're riffing on this topic, right? Yeah, it's too cool, my lawn hasn't filled in, yada, yada, yada. And then the turf guru of the group chimed in. And he says, why don't you guys use your PGR to help with the fill-in? And that right there is the twist. Because <laughs> I never would have considered using a PGR this early in the season. Temperatures are still too cool, grass isn't growing fast. And if you know anything about PGRs, that's the primary reason they're used. They do several things, but the primary reason is they slow down growth. Us warm season people, especially here in Texas, it's something we use in the summer when the growth potential's high, uh, especially with Bermuda, right? I mean, Bermuda, you get warmer temperatures, you dial in your irrigation and your fertilizer program, man, roar, it's a beast. So when he suggested using a PGR to help with fill-in, my first thought was, why on earth would I want to use a PGR to slow down growth when what I really want is for it to grow, grow, grow so it fills in, right? Well, then he explained that, hey, yes, it's going to slow down your vertical growth, which is, again, what a PGR does. But a PGR also helps with lateral spread, lateral growth. It makes a plant grow more leaves and more leaves create a tighter, denser turf. And he said, and it'll still happen even with the cooler temperatures. But I'll admit, it's early in the season, man. This is a month before I would even consider using it. But when the, when the rain man of turf pretty much tells you to do something, you just kind of trust the process. Yeah. So I went ahead and put it in my tank mix. It's on my lawn now. Let's see how this experiment unfolds. So let's get to it. First thing that's gonna go in my tank mix, always gonna be the ammonium sulfate. Let me just put it down here so I can get a flat part for the scale. Let me zero it out. I really like using ammonium sulfate because first of all, it's a nitrogen and sulfur only fertilizer. No other macros on it, just nitrogen and sulfur. And the cool thing about ammonium sulfate is that it's readily available when you spray it it's readily available to the plant, so it's a quick uptake. Now, as far as what I'm using, or the amount I'm using, I did a video where I talked about nitrogen rates, which is super important when it comes to fertilizing your lawn. If you wanna check that out, which I highly recommend you check it out, if you don't know anything about nitrogen rates and why and you know how to calculate how much to put down, watch this video, and I don't know, I'm watching one screen on the camera. I don't... Anyway, it's on one of the corners. That video, I talk about all that stuff and do the math and, and I repeat stuff over and over with the intention of, you know, helping people make sense out of it because it's a little, it's so simple, it's tricky. Anyway, so as I did in that video, I am going to use 0.5 or half a pound of ammonium sulfate. Again, there's a reason for that because it gives me a certain percentage of nitrogen. I'm going to use a half a pound and I'm gonna multiply that half pound, so 0.5 times the size of my property in the front, because this first tank mix is gonna be for my front yard. 
in my front yard, I have 1,600 square feet of grass, okay? Not flower beds, no trees, nothing like, no driveway, just grass area. So 0.5 times 1.6, and it tells me that I need 0.8 of a pound. So 0.8 of a pound I know is 13 ounces. So I need 13 ounces. There's 13 ounces. It's going in my, my water. Now this one, being that it's a 20, 20, 20, that means it's got all three macros. NPK, right? Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. I'm also gonna use half a pound of this. So I know it's also 13 ounces of this because that gives me, again, it gives me a particular amount of nitrogen. I don't wanna overdo my nitrogen. Really the main reason I'm using this one is because it's got all three macros. My soil needs all three macros. That goes in there. The next thing that goes in my tank mix is going to be the micronutrients. Now this particular micronutrient, this particular micronutrient package is uh, iron. Um, this is what I'm using. I hope you guys can see it. I hope it's not, the screen looks a little whitewashed. On this one, the application rate is one to two ounces per thousand square feet. One point, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go in the middle. One and a half ounces per thousand. So 1.5 times the 1,600 square feet, which is 1.6 in the front yard. And I need 2.4 ounces of this in my tank. Okay, now the reason you want to use micronutrients, in this case, it's iron, right? Micro, you need them in smaller amounts, is iron gives your lawn a pop of green. Um, now, don't, again, don't be an iron cowboy. Um, more is not gooder, right? Too much of it can turn your lawn black. Now, that's what I hear. I've never done that myself. Remember, man, just stick to the application rates. Don't go crazy on anything. If anything, shoot under the application rates. And if you've watched any of my previous videos, man, I'm a big proponent of doing everything in reduced application rates. Sorry that this is so, I'm just going crazy. Again, I'm trying to get this done before the, I like spraying at night, but I can't shoot at night. <laughs> I need daylight to get good colors and you can see my pretty skin color. Anyway, I'm gonna handle this stuff so I need to put on some gloves. Now the next thing I'm gonna use is my fungicide. I am using Eagle 20 EW. And the thing about fungicides that you need to know is that you can't use the same one over and over, okay? You have to rotate through different fungicides and I don't mean different brands. You got to make sure you're using a different active ingredient. Um, fungicides, uh, I'm sorry, funguses or fungi, <laughs> fungal activity. It develops a tolerance to active ingredients, so it's best to keep rotating through different active ingredients. Now in my part of Texas, we get a lot of humidity uh, and we get a lot of mornings. Pretty much every morning you wake up to dew on the grass and any lawn that remains damp, wet, moist for long periods of time. I mean, those are breeding grounds for fungus. Now, as far as this particular fungicide, I need 0.5 ounces for every thousand square feet. So 0.5 times 1.6, that's my front yard, and I need 0.8 ounces. And the cool thing is that some of these, you come already with like a little measuring thing. So you dump some in there and now Okay, so those were the four things that I was going to apply to my lawn originally. The two fertilizers, my micronutrients, and my fungicide. Here's my PGR, and I am using Tnex. That's the brand. Uh, it's Trinexapac ethyl is the active ingredient, Tnex for short. What I am going to go with right now is 0.15 ounces per thousand square feet. So 0.15 
times 1.6. Now I get 0.24 ounces. Okay, now I poured some T-necks into this cup because you need to use a syringe to measure such a small amount of fluid. Uh, again, I recommend like baby medicine syringes. Um, so I have it in a cup and I'm gonna syringe it out, the amount that I need for my front, for my front lawn. Okay. Spray that in my tank mix. Okay, now that I have everything I'm spraying to my front yard in the bucket in water, I need to mix it. Go easy. Now, time to put the mix in my sprayer tank. I think you guys can probably see that, right? Yeah. Anyway, this bucket's light enough. That I can do this where you guys can see it. Before we wrap this one up, let me just say this. Sincerely, to the millions of you out there watching this, <laughs> I really appreciate you watching. I really do. I, I hope these videos are providing you with some kind of uh, fulfillment, you know, whether it's you're making fun of me or you agree with me or you're learning something that you've never heard before or whatever it is. I just hope you're getting something out of it. Be good to yourself, man. But really, more importantly, I'll leave you with this one. Try your hardest to be good to everybody else around you. You guys know what it's like to get online and you see all the negativity. It's so easy, man. We're all guilty of it. Uh, try your hardest to fight that urge to say something that's not so nice to somebody else, right? The last thing this world needs is another. Right? Just, I want to say it, but I don't. Yeah, man, just be good to each other out there. Be cool. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.